Can I have your attention, please? Everybody. Attention, please. Attention, please. Okay, we're, we're, this meeting is to talk about the reconstruction process. This meeting is to talk about the reconstruction process of uh, Section 5 condos, roofs and inside interior um, repairs. Monty McLean is the project manager. He's the top guy on the ground for EnviroStruct and he's going to go through the list that we sent out to you and discuss the five or six uh, points he has on his list. Okay, Marty. Oh, I'll stand up. Yeah, go ahead. So, good morning. Um, you, you can tell the golf course is closed by the turnout. So anyhow, just kind of give you an update. Friday afternoon we were giving an, an updated list of what's approved. Uh, as far as the roofing is concerned, 45 roofs were added to it. Um, there is still another 56. Now, what's that mean to you that's in dispute? What that means to you is there are, most all of yours has been approved. Uh, we started off with 11. We added three more to it. Uh, we will be putting together a schedule either at the end of this week or first of the next week, you know, that will include all your buildings. We have three units that are still in, just to give you an idea, 141 Lollipop, um, 201 Peppermint, and 251 Candy Cane still has a dispute with them. And hopefully we'll work through that by the time we get through the projects themselves. The three that are still in dispute is 141 Lollipop, 201 Peppermint, and 251 Candy Cane. Those are the only three that's in dispute right now. The rest of them we'll work with, and probably what will happen with those three is there's a debate between repair and replace. And uh, those that have flat roofs seem to be, you know, the touchy point. And the insurance industry or insurance carriers have asked us on both sides to give our opinions on these roofs when we get up on them. Uh, we have a letter that basically, from an engineering standpoint, we've gotten five of them approved that were flat get repaired where we can't, we can't warranty it. I'll not do one I cannot warranty. So it puts them in a position of having to make a decision. Either the insurance industry will warrant that roof with a repair, which we know they won't, or the glades will, in which we know they won't either. So between the expertise of the people that I have on the ground right now, you know, in the roofing contractors, I've got two national companies out here. We're bringing in another crew the end of this week for <coughs> next week, and we're going to pick up the pace yet again. We're <clears throat> currently... Uh, we're about 30 roofs on a final approval right now from the, the county. We've got another 40 that are pending various inspections. As you go around the facility, you'll see people climbing all over these buildings. And uh, we'll be going into Section 11 next week, which has, um, I believe, 23 buildings in it. We will knock those out in roughly a month, uh, which will put us in mid-May. The current schedule out there right now has us with a completion of what's on them for mid-June, and we're about three weeks ahead of that. So manpower-wise, we've got plenty of people. It's just a matter of getting the approvals. Um, with that being said, you know, like I said, Section 5, we will be, like I said, I'll get it on the schedule. We'll most likely be looking at about mid-May for a kickoff on that. So, you know, in the world in which I live, I have a schedule out there that is 180 days, which puts me the third week of September. Weather permitting, we will probably finish this up on the roofing systems by the end of July. So, I mean, that's the best we can give you. We have people out now that have been out here for two weeks. Uh, they're going to continue on the firewalls, and all of you are fire separation walls. You all are aware of what the, the situation is with that on the units that have been, the firewalls have been exposed. <clears throat> fire department, fire marshal has allowed us to move forward with that unpermitted. We've already got, um, I think, five buildings done, getting ready to go up turn to do another 12. They're here every day. 
It takes them two or three days to do a unit. And we're going to continue to move through the facility, even with or without the roofs being done. I don't have to have a roof to get this done. We will add that to the inspection list when we pull permits for the interiors. We're in the process of getting ready to pull a dozen permits as we speak. Again, starting up Palm, and we have the manpower to do the interiors. We're already doing the small repairs. The county has allowed us to do that unpermitted because simply it's, it's technically they're not supposed to. You're, in commercial, you're supposed to have permits for everything. But if you're only looking at 10 square feet, 100 square feet, there's nothing jeopardized in electrical, nothing jeopardized plumbing-wise. The county would take me seven days to get a permit to pull a 10 square foot area. By allowing us to do this, we can have the whole process done within three. Work and everything else. So we're picked, we picked up the pace and again, we're knocking out the units that just have minor repairs. That will free up my drywall people when we start to the interiors. We've already had what they call a blower door test, uh, which simply means it has, it has to do with your energy calcs. How, how, you know, how solid are these units when they're closed up? You know, how airtight are they? Magic number is seven. Right now with them fully exposed, they're fairly tight. We're coming up with you know, showing 10. By the time the insulation's in and drywall, we will be well below the guidelines and we'll kind of go by, be able to bypass the certifications for them. That will again pick up two or three days you know, on the process. So that's one less inspection we have to have. So we've done the testing. We'll have done testing on a total of 12 units throughout the facility. If it runs consistent as it is right now, then we'll get the blessings of the powers that be with the county and they'll go ahead and let's close them up. We're still working with a contractor out here for the CO. We're, um, floor gallery is, Brandon has done, some of you may know him. They're working with us because our, our permits are good through CO. They have to be, you know, we have to CO the building. What they're doing, so because many of you have got your own responsibilities in regard to the finishes. And I'm finding out that many do not know where to go to get to the final step. They've agreed to purchase a half a dozen sets of cabinets, sinks, faucets, and, um, and simply what that means is that I take one insulation, drywall, there is no trim, no paint covering, no prime. All I have to do is have wires, twist nuts in the box, and I'll pass my rough. Devicing is on the property unit owner, which devicing means your switches, plate covers, outlets, that's up to the owner. How we're working this is I'm going to get a price list. It'll be a whole lot cheaper to let them do it, go through us, and then again, we're going to take what we set up for CO and we're going to remove them after the CO is issued. So, because I know you wouldn't want to keep what we're putting in them. So, the flooring, they're allowing us to use a concrete sealer. This is in the bathrooms only. We have to have some type of flooring covering in the bathrooms. They're allowing us to use a sealer, which technically they typically don't, but whatever you go back with on those of you who have floors that are stripped out, you can use anything you want on top of this product. But they're going to allow us to put it in. We have to have the toilet, both toilets functional. <clears throat> we have to have the tub showers functional. It doesn't matter if your tile's been ripped out and you've got something else you're going to do, they'll let us put up an FRP or a plastic panel up. As long as it runs water and drains, they don't care. Shower curtains on both. Doors that open and close on the entries to the bathrooms. Cabinet, sink, faucet, there's your CO. Kitchen will have a sink, faucet, sink base, again functional. And then HVAC, which is on the glades, will go in units. Uh, there's, there are a couple of items that we're kicking around with that right now because of the age of some of these units. And we're going to get with the glades on that because that is part of the glades. The HVAC system is part of the glade system. There's a unit that's been there for 10, 15 years. Normal warranties and a lot of the units are about 10 years. 
Our concern right now is twofold: one on water heaters, one on the uh, HVA, uh, one on the air conditioning systems. Water heaters are up to the owners. Again, age becomes the driver. We're work, there's a, uh, in one of the town halls, there's made reference, I think we've got a flat fee of like 120 or 125 bucks to hook it up. You know, take it out and hook it up. Because many of the closets got ripped out on that. Um, you cannot get it done for that. Because you call a plumber, they're going to have to pull a permit, and they're going to charge you whatever the rate is. We decided to go through this process because we're already permitted. I'm not out here to make money on the CO. I'm out here to get you a CO and get out of your way and allow you to go ahead and finish your units however you wish to do it. But we're trying to make it as affordable as we possibly can because I'm finding out from some of the general contractors that have been retained that they don't want to get involved in that aspect of it. That or they're wanting to charge too much money for it. I do not have to have light fixtures in the ceilings. I don't have to have, I don't have, to have the bells and whistles to get a CO. And anything to keep the cost down as far as FEMA is concerned. The appraisals have come back on the units and buildings that we've decided to, you know, because your, ta your, va your tax values were going to be questionable on some of the buildings out here, not so much your, in your section, but we decided to have, or the attorneys decided to pull an appraisal. The appraisals overall are coming back at about 22% more than what the taxable values are. So as far as we're concerned, we're going to get around FEMA. So, again, it's just a matter of getting you done now. So, and going you know, forward, uh, again, getting in the units, we're running about three weeks. We're just, like I said, just beginning to pull the permits. We're, it puts us about a month and a half simply because we still have old permits out here from Velocity. We're trying to get them closed out, canceled, make them go away, change of contractor. So, we've got several documents that are in the works, and Frank, many of you have met is working diligently with the county. They came out, they'll do inspections on 10 units, state that they've done it. We've, we've all told there were like 175 permits and we've got it narrowed down now to the final 25 or 30. So again, to keep us moving. Um, really, again, by the time we get into your area, we'll be right at that three week after the roof goes on. We've tightened the roofs down to where we can pull them off in about a week and a half per roof, depending upon the size of the structure. <clears throat> we are having to put, so far, uh, hurricane clips in everything that we're doing. To date, we've got nearly 4,000 of them installed. And that is, going, again, going back. For those of you looking for wind mitts from your insurance company, I encourage you to do it you know, once that's done because you already have your windows and doors. Your private carrier policies, it will save you, you know, I have a gentleman in this trailer this morning that that document that we have from the engineer will save him about $400 a year on his insurance coverage. So it's imperative when we get done or as we get them because the engineers are giving them to us, we keep them in our system and they're being sent to the glades. All you simply have to do is come to us, ask for them. You know, we can print them off, you know, with the building once they're finished. Um, I don't covered a lot of distance there, so it, it, it's your turn now. <laughs> so, yes. On the wind mitigation, uh, is that are we able to go forward on that once the roof is on? Uh, at what point are we? If you, there are some, and it's a good question because there are some policies getting ready for renewal out there. Of course, you're not going to get the wind mitt. Just renew your policy, and they'll mend it. Is what I've been told. Mm -hmm. So, but once the roof is on, once the engineer signed off of it. The engineer signing off of it simply means that we've gotten through the county. The county's in agreement, everything's the way it's supposed to be. We're, we're down, we're tight, we're airtight, watertight. And, uh, you know, so like I said, the engineer's report is, is key you know, on this because we don't want the inspectors. If we had inspectors, we would be delayed two or three days per building. We've, we've retained an engineer to <coughs> jump over that because an engineer's credentials trumps the building department. And also, I'm sorry, the second question I had was regarding preparing the buildings for the certificate of occupancy. Does the bathroom need to have a sink operational or just the toilet? No, sink has to be operational. Sink and 
So, okay, let's say the, the master bedroom, you know, there's the vanity mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. In the bathroom itself, there's a toilet and shower. So... That, there's a number of those, and, and if they call us out on a couple of them, we'll go in and seal the floor. That's all we have to do. If the floor is ripped out, we well, apply a seal. With regard to the sink in the master yeah. area where there's a separate vanity, and you've got a door shutting off the shower, the toilet. We haven't tried them yet. We're going to find out. <laughs> so, because, you know, they kept telling us that, that the bathroom itself, in my world, the bathroom is where the shower and the toilet's at. Yeah, and those that are split apart. So they, you know, until they actually walk into one of these and give us, okay, well, I need something functional, then we'll deal with that. And how are we as owners being, uh, how are you working that as far as, I understand we're being charged for? You're not going to get blindly charged. We're going to go into each unit and assess what it's going to cost. The price, I'm be, being, they're putting, preparing for me right now, uh, basically a, a, a value for each item. And whatever it comes up to be, whether it be, you know, $300 because of, you know, a couple of sinks and stuff, it's just labor. Really, it's kind of all what it comes down to. Some people still have their vanities and things. But you'll all be made aware that in order to bring you to CO, at the most, the, the, we're figuring anywhere from a few hundred dollars to no more than fifteen, sixteen hundred max. Because like I said, you're not keeping anything. It's all labor to make it functional. The floor preparation... Again, the sealer that we're using, I believe the numbers for both bathrooms is only like 175 bucks. So these are all things I know you cannot get done for those numbers. And again, we have the permits on them. But the Glades doesn't have to pay for it. And for those of you who are in buildings, for example, and I've been you know, confronted with this, you know, the, if you have vacated your unit, and there are two, build, two units in that building that are both demo. Even if I were to you know, use proprietary measures, you can't move back in until I see over the building. Until you call. So, you know, and I said it's been, it's been very disheartening for a lot of people because I've got some that are yearly in one example, and the other one, you know, their neighbor lives in Canada and they don't care. But the mobilization for these areas is very expensive. And the Glades, their insurance carrier isn't going to, you know, allow me or to reimburse me for the cost of that mobilization because somebody lives here year-round. They're just not going to do it. So that's the reason why we're trying to package everything up as much as we possibly can. So, uh, and again, the situation remains that if we were to do it, I still can't let you move back in the unit even if it was ready because the one next to you is not done. And I can't send crews out there, and there's several crews involved in this. I can't send them out there for a building. I have to send them out there for the batch. You know what that? It's just faster to do it. That's the reason why we're doing the small repairs right now. So we're not burdened with all of the, you know, small things. The small repairs that we're doing in some of them is going to free up a building. I've been asked to put together a list for the county and for the glades of those buildings that we no longer need. You know, it's not in the system. They can go back and go on. As soon as we, certain aspects of it will just allow us to release them. Because every permit that gets pulled right now goes under restoration. And that's the cost that they're watching. As soon as the building is CO'd, the cost of the restoration goes away. And the building still goes back to its full FEMA value. And that's where this gets really touchy. Because again, I've got several people, fully all four units, and all four have got bids out there for kitchens and baths at fifty thousand dollars each. And flooring, that's two hundred grand on a building that has a taxable value of about three. That's where this gets tricky. And then the other side of that is the, the percentage of what the integrity, interior te structural integrity, of the building is. We've got buildings that are totally gutted, but no event can I show that to the, to the county, because we have to do floor plans for every one of them. I cannot exceed 50% of the integrity of the interior. So again, it, it's, it's a slide rule and a big math, you know, it, because each wall thickness becomes the structural integrity. And if there's only half inch drywall on it, that's less than 10% of that structural integrity. It's not the whole wall. 
So again, there's just a lot of math that's going into it to keep FEMA away from this. So anyway, uh, questions again? Yes. I'm a renter since 97 and an owner since 2004. I have experienced two hurricanes, Wilma and now Irma. Oh, you haven't seen Charlie. Do we take care and do we understand that cheap is too expensive? Do we have to count for the next hurricane the same damages? No. The, what spared many of the buildings out here was the windows and doors that were already there, that you had done. This, the, the whole geography of this place would have been different had what was in those buildings already been there. I'm surprised that the integrity of the roofs held up as they did. But the, the, the manner in way the storm came in at 145 miles an hour, it wasn't sustained. It quickly backed off. Had that gone the same as Charlie for six or seven hours, and again, the geography here would have been totally different. This was more of a, a vegetation issue. But the structural integrity of the roofs are old. They're built in the 70s. And what does have strapping seem to hold but the strapping itself isn't today's standards. That is the reason why we're going through and having to put clips. We're literally putting them to the side of the truss on a four bolt and then drilling in top of the tie beam. That is the proper way that they're in. It, again, that's the way it should have been done. We, have, we do have the engineer review every building that has the strap over, some meg shift, you know, they're supposed to have five nails in a strap, and many of them you got two or three. <clears throat> you can't drill the strap because that will make the strap fail. There's no way to put the other two nails in it. So the consensus is just to go ahead of them picking and choosing to do all of them. The buildings out here on Palm was 140 <coughs> clips per building. So, you know, like I said, it's just the same way with the decking. We're cutting 16 inches back in some areas just so we can get to it from the top. There's no question then whether the integrity of the roof is going to be there. We know it is. So, yeah. Now, if it hits 160 mile an hour, we all got a problem. And it lasts for a while. Because I don't think there's anything out there that will sustain you it. You mean the, the, the roofs are uh, constructed like a wing of a plane. And you have the, the roof and you have the lee. And the lee lifts everything up. Mm -hmm. So. These, these roofs are always dangerous in heavy wind. They will be, but like I said, you, there's a number of buildings out here. A four foot overhang is dangerous no matter where you go on the uplift. But the way that it's strapped back, and again, we're exposing these tails. In some of the areas we had another one where we ended up having to take the full four foot end off and reinforce the cantilever and how it goes, how it overhangs the, you know, off the building. Because we want to make sure the structural integrity is back to where we're tying them in. So, but there's not many of them out here that's that way. Maybe to keep the fingers crossed. Yeah, like I said, there's nothing 100%, but it's the best that they tell us to do. So, yes? These clips going on roofs where there's only structural damage or where you're totally repairing the roof? Now, if we, in order, the roofs themselves is just the shingled areas. They're not going to, the insurance company, you know, like I said, it's about the way that the county looks at this. And again, it has to be in the exposed area. I've got roofs that we're only going to replace the flats on. Well, there's nothing to those. I mean, there's, right. we're not fastening to the building. So how many units are getting eclipsed like, out of all these repairs? Well, we, we've already, based on what we've already done, we're probably figuring about 80% of what we're tearing off is going to get them. Like I said, the only way I'm not putting a clip on is if I'm not replacing the shingle and it's a repair. And the way the repair is, is deemed is less than 50% of the roof. <clears throat> we had set up a, a, a criteria when we had come in. I will not do midfield patches. I know there's been some argument about that. If there's a midfield patch from an uplift in the wind, you can't guarantee that what's on both sides didn't get uplifted too. And there's been some argument, you know, some debate. Well, you can patch it, we do it all the time. Well, help yourself. I can't warrant it. 
and I won't. So we told the insurance company the reveal on that roof right there that I can see from edge to edge, top to bottom. That's the only way I'm going to address one of those roofs. Now the coping, I don't have much of an issue with. But again, to your question, I don't have to clip that roof because I'm, I'm less than 50%. Okay. But anything over that, the county you know, is going to require it. So is that all done within the uh, attic space? Uh, or no, where the everything's from top. Yeah, exposed all, it, exposed all up above. Yeah, so you know, what we have found out, though, the units that aren't damaged so much, but they still have some sealing out, uh, we do create kind of a mess on the interior from the pounding and everything. So, you know, we're asking people to be kind of, you know, get stuff kind of move or cover it with plastic because <clears throat> we're up there pounding. Yeah, I, we don't know what's below us. Right. Yeah, so, but uh, we had a couple instances where, you know, it was just more of a inconvenience than anything else. Yeah, so, and then of course I've been faced with those who are here for vacation. How long are you guys going to be pounding? <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I mean, I'm not going to stop. You know, I just, I, you know, I walk into a harness nest every time I walk into one of these meetings sometimes. But, yeah, so we're just going to keep right on rolling. Yes? I just want to make sure I understood you. If, for example, if it's a six-unit building and there's tops on two sections of that building, does that mean the entire roof is going to get re uh, reshingled? It's, again, these are the debates going between the insurance company and the, and the carrier because you've got the carrier, which I've seen that they've now conceded to some of the things that, that, that um, you know, Bobby Sims had put out there from Keys. So as long as they, they meet the agreement. But in answer to your question, I, if I remove more than 50% of the shingle, all of it's coming off. I've not gotten into the repairs because the repairs that I'm noticing based on what they're telling me is just coping. Yeah. Or, yeah, again, I'm not going to go midfield, so we're going to have to, each roof that gets in that repair status, we're going to have to take it case by case and see what it is. So follow up to that would be, so chances are if those roofs were less than 50 percent, they wouldn't get the... That's correct. Yeah, the county is not going to make us, you know, require us to do anything that's less than 50 percent of what we're doing. And again, that's where the question comes back, okay, on the reveal. If I've got two areas that there's, there's shingles in the field, which simply means the open part on two sides, now I've hit that 50%. And then that's where we'll get into an argument with the insurance company because the county's going to make us do it. And the only way I can do the other two sides is to peel them off. So am I correct in assuming then that the end result of that would be that certain buildings would have a different hurricane rating than other buildings? That's correct. Yeah, well, the, the ones that we're putting the clips on, the only way that that deviates is, again, by just what was mentioned earlier, is uplift and overhead. So those, that's the only way that that kind of changes. As far as structural integrity, the wind itself could pop off the end of that, that overhang, but that truss will continue to be attached to that tie beam. And I hate to uh, keep going here. So it wasn't a reasonable argument to be made to the insurance company to get everybody hurricane as much hurricane proof as possible no knowing that the next storm no okay. they will not be proactive <clears throat> yeah being proactive comes down to the to building owner and the you know, unit owner the insurance company in their world that's what they cover for right now just give you an example we're not looking at little dollars here you know, the insurance company is choking every time we have an invoice for one of these buildings. Because by code, it has to be done. By code, they have to pay for it. So, you know, that's part of their policy. So, so they choke more the next hour that comes in? Uh, they choke on all of them, man. I just, I've, I've, I've seen them go in different directions. Yes? Um, this is more, I guess, well, it's kind of both of you. But what about... In our reserves, we have money to replace roofs. Are, are there roofs in that have damage, but are in our per this year due for replacement? And let's say that you know it was due for replacement this year. Uh, it has only like a bike building. Basically, it's my unit, a little bit next door, out a six-unit building, and I assume it's going to be. Re repaired and the roof's not going to be replaced because the other end didn't have. What's your address? So, uh, 
112 Penny Lane. It, it says 104, 108, 112 Penny Lane. Uh, but in, in that case, would it be re roofed anyway mm -hmm. because it was due for replacement? Or 104 what? Yeah. 112 Penny Lane. Okay. It says 104, 108, 112. Okay, 104, 108, then it's uh, six units? Yes. Yeah, you're getting the full replacement, so it doesn't matter. So, you know, that was one of them they approved. So, yes? Where do you stand on the Lanai's? Uh, we have, we are so far separated on that right now. The, again, that's going to be one of those, those situations of the glades is it litigation and where they're going to go with it. Yeah, we... We knew when we came out because it's the number one question we get asked. But I have no recommendation for you. you know, and I just, you know, no one wants to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. I agree with legal counsel in what they're saying. It's part of the structure. It got attached. You can't take it with you. I agree with legal counsel there. But again, when they rewrote the state statutes on the insurance coverages for associations, apartments, hotels, when they rewrote that, there's so much, you know, there's a lot of ambiguity to it. And it comes down to whether it's actually stated, you know, in there what that coverage consists of. Well, then it becomes a legal battle. Because your carrier, you know, is not going to cover that lanai. You know, in all likelihood, most private carriers will not cover the outside structures. I can, I can get coverage from my lanai if I need it. And that's where my question going. Well, if you can, then you're one of the few. Because what, after Hurricane Charlie, that's the reason why the, the statute got rewritten is Charlie changed the dynamics of a lot of things. And at that time, even after Charlie, the property or unit owner you know, was responsible for the HVAC. But they turned right around and they put the associations, hotels, they put our apartments, condos, they put them back as being responsible for it because that is a structure that belongs to the structure. <clears throat> you know, so, and again, the Lanai's, you, couldn't, you, you, you didn't have enough money to ba pay for a cage after Hurricane Charlie. Because the engineering standards changed so significantly, you know, you had a fifteen thousand dollar, you know, on August the the, the first of two thousand four, fifteen thousand dollar cage put up, and everybody was in Happy Land. You know, August the twentieth, week after the storm, that was a thirty thousand dollar structure. Because the engineering just went ballistic on it. So, and again, this is part of the argument they've got going out here. Like I said, there's just a lot of moving parts with that. They're hoping to get some resolve on it. And, but as it stands, in answer to your question, we're not involved. We're, I think I'm going to have some challenges over on turn, you know, trying to get COs on buildings that people, it's unsafe when you walk out the back door. You know, I don't know where this is going to take us, you know, but we won't know until the inspectors come in because, again, the egress has already been shut off, but there still needs to be an egress there. Put up the railing. Yeah, yeah. See the see the glaze pay for that one too. Aren't they part of the permanent structure the way they were constructed? That's the argument. That is exactly the argument. Yeah. Part of the wall. Because they were engineered, they were permitted, and in many cases, people invested in impact. You know that went on. So, in the world in which you're talking, yes. But again, as far as the insurance is concerned, they're going to argue. Now, personal opinion, I think there's going to be a settlement of some sort. It's going to be blanket just to make it go away, but there'll probably be provisions put within the policy on the rewrite. Yeah, when it's done out here again. Yes? Question, when you guys throw up the uh, ceilings from the walls, are you going to skim coat the walls in preparation for paint? It is a level four finish. So you put a level four finish? Yeah, it's level five is the top you get. That's as slick as it gets. Level four is just... Will you be putting in baseboard as well? No. No. The only thing, we're, no trim, no window treatments, no, I mean, it, no prime, I mean, it, it is just bare bones. The only thing that we have to make sure happens, and we don't even have to put casing around it, is the bathroom doors are operational. They open and close. You're just looking for the CMO. Yes, sir. That's it. So then you're not coming in after the CMO. Now, yeah, you're back. Now you're back to an improvement instead of restoration. That's the reason why it's imperative that we work with the contractor if you've hired someone, because we don't need unnecessary money spent. We don't want to jeopardize the unit, the building at all. 
So, but the CFO, again, you're going to put case, floor covering, because again, they can walk in and half your floors tore out, and they don't care. You know, the county. As long as the two bathroom floors have a finish to them, your appliances do not have to be hooked up. There doesn't even have the appliances in there. But we have to make sure that we have the connections for the appliances. Right, so then after you get the CFO, you're done. Yep. Is that what you're saying? That's, won't you be glad to see that? <laughs> won't you be glad to see that? Well, it would be nice to have things back to normal. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, I, I keep saying my happy dance is going to be New Year's when I pull that trailer out of here. That would be, be one of the fastest projects like, of this size I've ever pulled off. So, anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. More question for Kevin than you probably. Moving forward, will the budget and the reserves reflect um, clipping the roofs that don't get clipped this go round? It's already in there, actually. Okay. It's in I there wanna, at uh, $4,000 a building. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. There has been, you asked a very good question earlier. Yeah, and, and like I said, there are buildings that are not getting new roofs. The question has been asked in our meetings, you know, mm -hmm. as we've had them over here on Fridays, and again, for the different sections and what they may have in reserves. Do, you know, if a building is not scheduled for a roof, do you want to look at or entertain that? Because right now, the pricing that we're getting is high volume. Yeah, I mean, we're buying tens of thousands of squares of shingles. We're buying, you know, I mean, we're buying in bulk. So there is some value, you know, in that. Uh, the normal prices on a per building out here, just kind of give you, a, an, you know, hype, just kind of an example. A single building out here by itself was in the range of doing what you're talking, you know, clipping and everything else, was in that 30, 35,000 range. Let's take one that's over on Palm. I'm getting them put up for 10,000 less because of what we're doing. So, there, like I said, there is you know, economy of scale <coughs> at that point. So, it, it is up to the section you know, directors, and I, I think it's probably been posed to them of, okay, look at that, how many are we really getting? I don't look to see what's on this list for your section changing much. <clears throat> unless we find something when we get up. We've got two buildings. Uh, again, we had two on Palm, 200, 208, I think it is right next door. The way the flat roof was applied, they draped it over the shingle. And that's where they adhered it. They had on them for a shingle only. What happens in that case is we have to cut that modified roof in order to get to the shingle and rewrap it. I will not warranty it. Many of these buildings have a negative flow, which means the water ponds or it just doesn't, it doesn't roll the way it's supposed to. By code, I have to have a positive flow. So I take that away by doing that type of repair. So we've got an engineering letter put together <coughs> that lets the insurance adjuster for keys and the carrier. And again, it goes back to what I said earlier. If they want to warranty that repair, you know, that's up to them. But, you know, so we've got, we've got four or five that we've kind of won that battle. Our guys are very, very good about, you know, doing an assessment on a roof. Some of them, I don't mind repairing at all. If we can warranty it, we're all good and, you know, we're all golden. So it's just, it's, it's one of those, it's a case-by-case case when it's tied up. And that's kind of where we are with it right now, you know, with the insurance carriers, is that, you know, we're, we've got it pinned down to where now, if we're only 50 buildings in dispute out of over 200, you know, I, I'm in happy land. You know, we can make that work. And then they're allowing us to go in and make our own assessments. Like I said, what's in green here was what you were already approved for. So I knew yours would be fairly simple to get through. Yeah, so, you know, they just needed to finish it up. And again, they added, you know, they added three more and the other three we get to investigate. Yes? General question, uh, responsibility of general maintenance, shutters that need to be replaced that are still laying landscaping that I think Bobby hasn't picked up yet. I mean we've asked for this probably more for you Kevin for three years with the shutters that were loose and needed repair with maintenance that no one's done shit with them. And now they're blown and still laying in the landscaping mm -hmm. since October or whatever the storm was. I mean what do we gotta do to get the 
delayed street blocks. Well, I thought that uh, previously the shutters that were needed were ordered, and they have to be installed. I know the one on my building, that's only one of them, that replaced. So I'm not sure why that's still there. If you send me an email. We've, we've requested it numerous times, even before the hurricane, and there's still nothing being done. I know. No. Um, I was the previous right. director, and those shutters were audited back in November. Uh, I asked the crews to take down any that were flapping. Still they, flapping. Well, they still must hanging. have missed it, and I'm sorry. The shutters came in, they were the wrong style. They had to be returned. They were then returned, and they have to be painted. And the paint, whenever they can free up the, uh, <coughs> the crews, then they can paint them and get them back on. But they have been in just as the hinges have been in for a long time. So it's a matter of getting that crews here to do it. That's the easiest question I've had. Do you want to talk? Our units was one of the units in uh, contention of being approved. That's something you want to talk about. What building is it? Do mine, 141. <laughs> Two what? 251. Candy cane. Yours will probably be a little easier to get through because they are in agreement on the shingle aspect of it. There's structural damage too, though. Well, they, again, they've approved, you know, whatever I get into when I peel those shingles off, doesn't matter. They'll pay for it. So, but as far as the, the flat section, I guess, one, the uh, carrier is saying there's no damage, and Keys is saying it's a repair. So that'll be one of them that they'll allow us to make a decision on, right. you know, once we get in there. Yeah, and 141 is the flat, right? It's still the flat that you're arguing about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because like I said, that's the one the insurance, you know, the insurance industry is really kind of funny, because they're, they're, it's a single ply. We already know the life expectancy. We already know what's going to happen. Um, you know, again, when we stepped into this, you know, we set certain guidelines and certain rules on what we would and would not do. And um, they begrudgingly have to go with that. You know, and again, unless they're willing to pin a letter. Do they treat the, the flat roof and the shingle part as two separate yeah. approvals, or would they do only one? Or, and oh, yeah. We're doing that. Both? We're doing that up in Quail's Nest. We've got a couple of them to wear the flat roof only, because mm -hmm. some of those roofs up there were new. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we've got, you know, we're doing the flats only, and I don't mind that. You know, the one thing that we did get them to do is the vast majority of these roofs out here are what they call single ply. You know, and um, it was a bitumen roof that's just, you know, again, they don't have much of a life expectancy. There were three areas that we were able to upscale, again, based on volume by. You know, one is we've got, you know, the architectural dimensionals going on all of them. Uh, 30 year that they've got a, uh, a zinc in them which will reduce the staining that you all see and the other one was TPO so we've got a rubber roof going on everything out here and those were the three things that we were able to do uh, because the, again of the volume the cost was negligible so we managed to get that that worked in so you know like I said you can get 25 years out of these roofs providing you don't have another storm so um, another question. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there somewhere else? No, you're good. Um, perhaps Kevin, that one building on Penny Lane that's had a considerable amount of damage. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering what's going to happen with that. I, I've heard rumors of uh, it being demolished or something. No, I don't know. The, the no, no. He'll have to answer that one. And yeah. How will what one has happens, a train. How will it impact Section Five? How will what? How it will impact us? Uh, what what happens with with that, because I, I, I've heard things about things in a specific area are contained, the expenses for restoration, whatever, whether it's vegetation or whatever, is contained in that section. I don't know if that's the case or not, but that maybe you could be Yeah, that, the building, the structure itself is the only thing that I'm responsible for. Um, in what I have seen out here, and my guys have gone through myself. I, there's not a building coming down out here. It will be fixed. So, uh, some of them a little bit more extensively. Each building is a standalone as far as cost is concerned. You know, it's the same way with the units that are in, in them. But, uh, no, I, I can tell you unequivocally that there is no intentions of tearing anything down out here. And the buildings are association owned as a Obviously, we as owners don't own the structure. The structure. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, like I said, we. Yeah, I said there, that's just if you're hearing that, then you, I'll squelch it right now. No. You know, I will figure out a way to get it put back together. So, yes. I have a question about 201 Peppermint. You mentioned that. Uh, do you know what the repairs will be for that building? Again, you're in a very similar situation to him. They're going to let us make that call in the flat roof because one's saying no damage, which is the carrier. And Keys is sitting back saying, yes, there's a repair. But what's the definition of repair? So, but the shingles gets replaced. That report you keep looking at that has what's approved and what's in dispute, is that published someplace or is that just your working document? Now, it was on the, there were two documents that was published. The first one got my knuckles busted. Uh, that was the one I put out on a, a schedule back in January. And it was the, the top, well, they called it their top 40 list. And the attorney said, you know, he goes, make sure when you put that out there, it's, that's what's going to happen. All right. Well, I mean, you guys, your guys have gave, you, this one, you guys gave me the list. And then the next thing you know, we're putting this together in, 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 in the end of January. And then February 22nd, I mean, as we're starting to get things mobilized, trying to figure out where we're going and what we're doing, February 22nd, I get this list here. 16 of the roofs were on that schedule that I was told to make sure was correct were nowhere near approved. So other than removing them, we basically put the scope, a definition of scope wording in there, you know, until we could find out because this became more real to me. So is it or is it not? It's supposed to be, yes. They, Blades has got it. Yeah. Yeah, they, um, yeah, they should. I, I just would see no reason why they wouldn't publish what was out there. I mean, the color coding on it is something I did, you know, so, but, because uh, technically they come in looking like, you know, without the orange like that, so. Who would, who would get that, Kevin? Who would you see to get We can get it from the office, but the thing is, uh, unless you have a color, colored printer, they're not going to mean too much to you, you know. No, but can't that, that be denoted on whatever they get Well, if they want to, if they want to do well, it. Well, yeah, if they yeah. want to do it, yeah. They want to do I mean, it. Right now, it. you're seeing all my chicken scratches and everything else yeah. that's on there. I've, I've got I've got uh, one previous to this, but this is a moving document. This could change every day. Sure. So, and but you, you but need a colored no printer. From day from day one to day two, what in the world's going on mm -hmm. here? That's the problem. Well, the, the, and true, it's been the same way with for us. You know, because like I said, sure. I mean, I took a beating like no other after that first published schedule. Sure. Yeah. You know, so I just you know it, it was I mean. Yeah, that was we were, I mean, we were in a hostile environment at that point. Yeah, so the last thing I want to do is walk into a town hall. So, but, but basically, when we were able to define it, uh, the 22nd, like I so said, we started, you know, a week or so after that just to kind of stay with that first schedule. You know, we started tearing roofs over on Palm. And we tore a roof off that wasn't approved. And that's the reason why I got cautious. You know, at that point, we ultimately will be paid for. We're getting paid for, it, but we did take one down. I've got another one out here. We've done it too, on a flat roof. You know, because we went off of an, one that didn't get updated correctly. So, you know, there are when you're looking. You know, I said a couple hundred roofs. I mean, you can make mistakes. Mm. This question is for Kevin. Almost the whole blades got a five hundred dollar or a fifty. $50 a month increase in our <coughs> When this is all said and done, is some of that coming down? The fact that two years from now you're going to have to replace this roof and it's in the reserves, or the reserve is going to be lowered, and is that $50 a month going to be mitigated, or we, or, or not? you got it, so you're spending it? Yeah, I, I can't answer that. Uh, it just depends on what happens. Theoretically, uh, these roofs are being replaced and paid for by the insurance company. There's money in the reserves at different levels. Uh, like I know my my in my building, which which uh, they're going to replace the shingles on mine. We would deal in a couple of years. Because at the last hurricane, we had to have the whole roof done. That money's in there. So when the reserve study is recalculated, don't forget the reserve studies uh, are the reserve study is a bank account. That's actual cash you're looking at. When you look at that report, that's actual money. That money will be there, and theoretically, when this is all recalculated for the whole glades, <coughs> theoretically, the rate should come down. 
because if you've got money in there that was going to be spent, let's say in 2020, it's not going to be spent again for another 15 years. <coughs> so there should be an excess there. So it should affect the rate. But what's going to happen with operating? Well, the extra 50 bucks, was that to help us pay the deductibles and the this and the that <coughs> and all that other stuff? The no, no, the 50, bucks is op no, 50 bucks is a combination of operating and section reserve and general reserve. Now, usually money that are in those by state statute, when they're earmarked for something, you can't use it for anything else. That's right. So you can't. Well, yeah, you can't mix. You can. You can't yeah. mix reserves and operating. Right. You can actually use reserves. Uh, you can use the money in there for things that are in the reserve if, if it's an you know, approved line item, but you can't take the money and put it in operating. Okay. So uh, the fifty dollars. Um, is uh, I think I think I sent out something to everybody showing what what how we got to the 50 bucks. I think I did that. I'm not really sure because I sent you out so much information. I don't remember what I sent you out, but. Um, a shortfall of income for the lines not operating, and uh, also for a shortfall in the dining room and other operating. And weren't going to be covered because of also because of a lower number of renters. If you had a question or I didn't hear it, I can hardly hear you. I'm deaf in one ear, by the way. So, did you ask me a question now, or did you make a statement? Because I didn't hear you. <coughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay, your turn. Uh, we have no walls, or no toilets, no doors. So I have to, I have to buy them. Okay, uh, you you've got kind of an isolated. Velocity should have never once, first of all, taken the toilets out of there. Right. And we have been asked to track bathtubs, shower basins, toilets uh, that they should have never taken out. The intent here is we are going to, there's two things. Yeah. I mean, do I have to get my own plumber and my own? No. We've been asked to take care of that. What we're going to do is keep a separate list of what Velocity should not have done. And they're going to go, they, they're going to pay us for it. But they're going to go after Velocity because they still owe Velocity quite a bit of money. <clears throat> and there's some things that should never have left that, you know, those condoms. And that's one of them. So they've asked us to purchase, you know, and put them in. Now, now this gets real tricky because we're not going to go out and buy you brand new cola. You know, we're going to buy what we can buy in bulk is going to get past code. Well, I need to get past code so I can bring down contract. Yeah, as long as you're aware that we're going to put something in there that's functional and, you know, we're not getting the high boys, we're not, we're just buying toilets in the world. Yeah, you know, we're going to move that out afterwards anyway, right? Yes. Yeah, like I said, so. <clears throat> Your team is going to move it out? <clears throat> we're going to pull, is that what you were saying? yeah, we're going to pull everything out for the CEO. Okay. So I'd like to understand that if Velocity came in and destroyed your unit, the glaze will stand behind the owner of the unit? Depends upon what they did. Because if they pulled, it's not your furnishings, your appliances, or anything. You know, they have drawn a line between toilets, bathtubs, and showers. Because we've noticed that some of the tubs were damaged, we noticed that the chip, we noticed that, but, you know, as far as the glaze is concerned, velocity caused that damage in the storm. I'm talking about over exuberance yeah. in their pie. Well, I'm ripping the place apart. Yeah, unfortunately, there's not much more. We've seen that unit after unit after unit. So, yeah, I mean, the Glades carrier is putting it back together as far as drywall is concerned. But you're talking about cabinets, you're talking about trim, you're talking about things they shouldn't have doors, things they shouldn't have done. You know, it's. The Glades hired the contractor, so therefore the Glades should be responsible. Well, and again, that becomes argumentative simply because had that contractor not been here, you all would have been a whole lot worse shape than you are today. Yeah, because that, when you get an event down here, that stuff has to come out and it has to come out in a hurry. Because I worked South Seas after Hurricane Charlie. I was out there for two and a half years. The biggest nightmare I had, mold. Couldn't get to the units fast enough. That's right. And you talk about expensive. And because we couldn't even get on South Seas for almost a week. 
and we were one of the first responders out there. So, you know, it was one of those cases that, and even the private homes, oh my God, you walk in a month, you already, you knew what was in the refrigerator, you didn't want to open it. <laughs> so, but, you know, like I said, it's just one of those cases that had, they, Velocity was here, and most of these teams are out of Texas, this is what they do. You know, they're storm chasers. Did they get overly zealous? Yes, they did. By the same token, too, they, the right thing was, was getting them emptied so that there was nothing for mold to grow. That was, the, that was the right move. Now, the county stepped in when they started getting a little carried away a month after they got here, a month and a half. The Glades got a little apprehensive when they started coming up and doing things like what you're talking about. When you've never been in one of these events before, you don't know who to hire. I mean, you're trying to get somebody in as fast as you possibly can. And unfortunately, in this area, there are very few companies that are geared to do something of this magnitude. And usually it does come in from out of town. So, in defense of the Glades, the damage would have been a whole lot worse had they not done what they did. Right. Then, in going that next direction, stopping it before it got out of hand. Because it was obvious what, you know, velocity, the county caught it first, the Glades, again, they, they run a facility. They're not used to catastrophic loss. They put the skids on it. You know, September the 13th, there was an event. By November the 13th, the contractor that's here was ready to be terminated. We were asked to review this project in November about that time, and we're here today. So, you know, like I said, there was a lot of right moves whether they were done at the right time or not, it's, you know, hard to say. But velocity would have been you a good question earlier from whoever asked about buildings. When I first came out here, that 50% rule was solid. We pulled permits on these structures going back five years. That's usually the reset. They use that improvement cost to evaluate the value of the building. You're going to lose about 20% of the buildings that were out here. There was no way to put them back together. The county erased it all, which is their prerogative reset it back to zero from the day of the event. Mm -hmm. So we had full valuation to work with. That's what we're working with now. As soon as the building COs or it's out of our system, that resets again. So you had pre-storm, restoration, and then you've got the improvement. The improvement comes out completely. So, yeah, you know, and again, here we sat, and I know it's been, what, seven months? There's been a lot done in seven. And the paperwork on this is a nightmare because everything has to be tracked. Everything has to be accountable because, again, we're dealing with insurance companies. Yeah. So back to the question about the toilets and stuff along those lines there. You know, that's the reason why we have to run separate documents <clears throat> is we have to make sure where every dollar goes in order for the glades to recover and uh, obviously for us to get paid. So, <clears throat> yes? I have a question, basic. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be wise when you have to replace in certain uh, houses piping to put insulated? We waste water like hell. We waste uh, until it's coming warm in the kitchen and it, it's coming warm in the uh, bathroom, and that would reduce costs. Well, we're again when we get back into an insurance loss, you know, it, it's a matter of life and kind. That's always going to be that way. That's the way that the law is written. Now you're talking codes. There are code requirements that, that, that require us to do certain things. They're water heaters. For those of you who have a water heater that plugs up into the wall, we cannot do that. They will be hardwired. So they have a disconnect on them. So there are certain things that we have to do along the lines of what you're saying is by code. Now, where the line gets drawn in that is that there are four decades of different wiring codes out here and different plumbing codes. So anything that we see, we have to bring it up to the current code. <coughs> but we do not have to expose anything. So, and we get talked about the firewalls earlier. I've got units that only have six feet on one side pulled out of a firewall. We saw it. We know it's wrong. So we're having to replace the whole 40 feet 
or put a firewall in there. Are we causing any more damage? Not really, but if we have to, we have to. They're not going to let us off the hook. So think about these guys when it's 85 degrees out there climbing up in this inside of space about that wide with drywall and their, their sealers. They're earning their money when they're doing that. And so the roofers, quarter to seven, is still working on the yes. right history. They, those guys have been fantastic. They have been absolutely incredible. You know, and that's the reason why we feel that we're going to be able to better the schedule and what was originally laid out. Yes? Is that separation in the masonry or is it, is it drywall? It's, it's ba they, they put, actually, they ran the CMU up to the height of the ceiling because then they set their trusses on top of it. That, or at least they were supposed to. I mean, original construction. Original yes. construction. And then they put some, some have got plywood, some have got some pieces of drywall. In fact, some of the trusses missed the wall itself over this far. You know, so I've got to fill this gap. So, you know, you can stand in one unit and look over the top of it in the other unit. So, there was some interesting construction over the last four years. Yes? On a restoration, I know you have a maximum amount of the female wall. How do you keep one person, say there's a unit of four, there's two that need replaced, how do you keep one person spending a disproportionate share of money so the other person can't do it, stay under the FEMA ceiling? Because the county notifies me of every permit that's been requested. And also to we, uh, the office itself, because what's kind of helped out a little bit is you have an architectural review board, and they give me an update every time there's something applied for, but that doesn't keep someone from doing this. So we've got a group with uh, Collier County, the inspectors, building officials. They will send an email every time someone comes in with the uh, request for a permit, and we simply stop the process. Because it has happened, and it is happening. That you keep everything within due bounds, so it's equal all the way across. Yeah, they'll notify us, and then as soon as the person gets upset and they come in and find out they couldn't pull a permit, they'll they'll come see me. Yeah. So you know, some not so excitedly, but they'll come see me. But uh, and again, I don't want their work. I don't want their contractors' work. I don't care. I don't do this. Yeah, you know, I put it back together. I just yeah, you know, do my thing. Yeah, but the, the improvement business I got out of a long time ago. Yeah, you know, I like building buildings, building structures, building, you know. So, you know, this is just one of those things I moved down here to get away from, from Indianapolis. Because I used to do this up north, and I moved here in 2004. Two months after I got here, Charlie came through. So, yeah, so I never did get away from it. <laughs> so, yes. Um, speaking about the drywall, mm -hmm. we were here. I'm glad my place got gutted because there was no drywall left, but we would have had mold if wet as the place was. We had water running out of the kitchen cabinets. We had water in the oven of the stove. So we know how wet it was yeah. in there because we were here right after it. But if you did not see the amount of damage that there were within your own place, to hear people say, well, they should have done this to my place. It was, it was, well. I think I said, some of it was overzealous, and some of it was situations like yourself. You know, because you have to remember, you don't have any power. You know, and I mean, it's, it's, it's humidity at 100%, and we're in the, you know, late summer, and in Florida, for those of you who maintain here, we start, it's already 86 degrees. You know, I called some friends of mine up in Indiana, and they're still wearing coats. Yeah, so... Yeah, like I said, this is, we, 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 we pick our poison. And uh, you know, for the summertime, you know, I always told people. Six days with no power, you it would have no done. idea yeah. what it's like in one of those places if you weren't here. No, it would have. You would, stumped. It would, yeah, it, the mold would have gone rampant. So, like I said, they did some things right, they did some things wrong. At the end of the day, here we sat. Yeah, so, yes. How, how are the small roof repairs being? I think you mentioned that earlier, but I think I missed it. You got a situation, if you look out or you'll see some tarps or you'll see some peel and stick roof back here, for example, has a coating over the, the coping. That I can fix. I don't have a big deal with that. But the ones that you see where there are patches in the middle of the roof, what we call the field, yeah. I will not fix those. So they will pay me to go from that edge to that edge from the top to the bottom. So are those still under negotiation? They're, they're basically when we get the section, 
we're going to call it out because, like I said, I've not bent on that rule since the day I walked out here in, in November. Okay. Not changed one bit, and I won't change. So, you know, like I said, if and now if they're willing again, I said this. If they're willing to warranty it after I walk out of here, that's up to them. That that being the Glaze and the Carrier. Yeah. So yeah. So did I understand you correctly to say that every unit that has uh, had damage or will need a roof? They're on a schedule. They will be. Uh, this updated one will allow me to get into Section 5. It will allow me to get into two other sections because I've got now enough units to mobilize and make a, you know, yeah. make a value to it. Yeah. And um, all we're simply doing now is finishing up. Like I said, we're going to Section 11. We'll be up there for a month or so. But I've got the Section 7. We've already started. We'll be out of there in two or three weeks. So we're trying to find out. May date? What was that? Well, probably in May we'll be able to move into Section 5. Yeah. You know, so what we're looking at right now, you know, like I said, I've got the availability of people, but I need to see how, you know, section seven, I've got 19 over there, but those are cookie cutter. You know, we can pop right through those. So as soon as they wrap up, I'm just watching to see what team comes off first. Yeah. And we're bringing out another crew, like I said, this end of this week, we're bringing out another crew. So. Yeah. And when I, when uh, Monty gets to the point where he, not this, not this list, but this one right here, which is the pert chart. This has all the dates on it by uh, address. I will. I'm not going to send this out to you because first of all, it did come out very well. It was kind of, it was kind of a gray. I'll send out a special email listing all of our units. our units, all the buildings, not the unit, the building, and when it's supposed to be done. All right. Be will easy to read. Supply us an approved list of painters and finish carpenters as necessary. Here's, we're going to put together, there's been some discussion, okay, on that. And there's going to be a town hall. Uh, they're trying to put it put together with three general contractors that have approached, okay? Because if they allow one person, none of, I can't make a recommendation, they can't make a recommendation because you own it when you say it. So, you will have a choice of probably three general contractors that will be on site. You know, for that little town hall, they get a five minute sp spiel. Like I said, again, I don't want the interiors of these. You know, so, you know, I can tell you, again, floor galleries, I've been working with Brandon, who wants to help me with the COs, and he's been with a lot of people, and he's got a lot of contracts out here. So, he's been around for a long time. So, you know, like I said, he's, a, he's stepped up to, to help me. You know, and to help you all get through the CO process, and he's been more more than fair and accommodating. So. Yeah, and I can I can recommend Flooring Gallery because they uh, back in two thousand and uh, five and six they redid our whole condo. They took care of the whole thing. I mean, okay. Every we bought everything the from them. Yeah, they take care no, of everything. No, everything. Cabinets. Yeah, they've got a, they've got a GC connection. Flooring, yeah, so. flooring, everything. I had them, I had them too, and I saw. And so did yeah. Joanne. Yeah. They did a really. But I didn't really, recommend. They, they weren't flooring gallery. It's up on 41. Right as you get to the Iberia Bank, it's on the corner. There's a little strip mall. They're right there. They weren't the cheapest, but they did the best job. Anybody else? I have a short question. How do I know that in a, uh, my condo has no damage? I'm very lucky. How do I know that on the roof there is no leak somewhere? What's your building? 118 Penny Lane. 118 Penny. What are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. Sorry? I said, you're not in Section 5, are you? Yeah. yeah he's oh, on is it? Oh, so 118. 118. 118. Yeah, we're, we're on the, the corner. We're on the even side. Maybe he'll buy your condo if you want to sell yeah, if nobody knows where it is, somebody can find me. <laughs> What's the address again? 118 Penny Lane. Yeah, yours is one that's still kind of in dispute. That may have changed, but uh, you get the shingle replacement, but again, the flat roof, so they're going to leave that up to us. So. And again, you don't the shingles. Know, yeah, you get the shingles on the slope roof, but the no. flat roof is what they're probably going to leave up to. Us. So nothing inside in the roof. No, not no. much yet. No damage. water. Yeah, they've not. Um, let me check one more thing. Yeah, 
Yeah, they're both, if, like I said, you're on still the, the unapproved list. But that's probably one of them, like I said, they're in agreement on the shingle, but they'll probably wait until we get out there and take a look at that one. Yeah. When, when they do the flat same roof, as my do building, you put same on thing. Asphalt? Pardon me? When you're doing the flat roof, you, is it rubber, asphalt? Rubber. Or it's rubber. TBM. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We've got to look at the Oh, no, no, no. We'll put the, you know, uh, the foam down to the insulation. We'll make a slope and make sure we've got the coping edges. We kind of got delayed because the engineer slid a, a spec through on us at the very beginning. It takes me three weeks to get the metal. So he kind of blindsided me a little bit on palm. So we had to order the metals, but we ordered enough for everything else. We you know, had, to, had to go with the engineer. Yes? 257 Candy Cane Lane. Are we getting a new look? Two what? 257. 257. Candy Cane. Two five seven. Mm. I don't have a two five seven. On candy cane? Yeah. She's not even on the list. <coughs> You're not any two five seven, I don't there's not on any list I've got. It's the same as one ninety six seven, it's the same building. Oh. Oh, I see it now. You are in there. Yeah, it's an eight planks, right? Yeah, yours is getting the shingle roof, but the flat is a repair, and they're both in agreement on that. So we'll have to look when we go. Yes? When, when we uh, are all finished, when you're all finished with the unit and we get it back, do we have to get a permit for uh, finishing it? Yeah. Well, getting a permit in this town can take months. Well, it does. First of all, you'll not be able to pull. The units are considered commercial. Right. I mean, so a general contractor, it just depends on you know, how well connected they are to the Should we be looking at yes. now? You should be looking at a permit. You should be looking for a contract. I have a contract. Have a contract. Should you be pulling a... No. They will not let you pull a permit. So... Yeah, like I said, it just depends on the time. Right. Yeah, I'm not allowed to pull permit. But, you know, again, we'll expedite things as much as we possibly can. Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much for coming. Good meeting.